Now, there are some uh, key terms um, to understand about these tests, um, and and they fall kind of under the, the rubric or the category of what we refer to as test construction. And when uh, these tests are, are put together, essentially, um, we have to find some way of understanding the significance of these the scores that somebody uh, derives from any of these tests. And so we, we compare them uh, against other persons of similar ages, um, uh, against other um, people, essentially. And, and that's one way to understand how well someone actually does. So we compare a performance the, and uh, they must, ultimately we have to define them against a, a pre-tested group. Now one of the key concepts that we use is uh, the idea of standardization. And, and this concept itself is that we, uh, when you give a test, uh, you have to follow very strict guidelines um, in order to provide the test to a person that uh, is being tested, which means that all the instructions have to be the same, the amount of time that they're given has to be the same, and essentially we try to uh, reduce the number of variables um, that uh, interfere with the person's uh, performance so that we can get kind of a clean uh, example of the person's performance itself. So standardized test has to be representative of those who will be taking the test in the future. And typically what we use uh, uh, as a result of standardization is something we refer to as the uh, normal curve. And that's what you're looking here in this particular diagram. And essentially over the course of many, many trials, thousands of people, um, what we find is that the, the scores cluster in a particular way. And in the Wechsler Intelligence Score, what we find is that between the uh, first, uh, and we refer to these as um, a standard deviation. Uh, and I'll, let me just write these down so that you understand them. A standard deviation. Uh, and essentially, what that word implies is that the amount of deviation from the mean um, or the average, which is 100, okay? Remember what I said, the, 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 the average uh, score is 100. So the, the deviation f around 100 is standard in each direction which means 85 to 115, we have about two-thirds of the population uh, falling between um, 85 and 115. Oops, missed a one. So 68% falls in that category. Um, beyond that, the farther out you go, less and less people fall within uh, these categories. So when you go out uh, two standard deviations, which takes us from 100 out to 70, uh, the, the scores become rarer, less likely to happen. And so now we're only adding 13.5% uh, to the number of people. And so we go off from two thirds, one third, 33%, 34% on each side of the average, now we add another 13.5%. Uh, and now if you look at the averages, now about 95% of the people fall within 30 points of, of, of the average here. So 34% and 13, we're talking about 47.5% on either side fall either way. And so the vast majority of people begin to fall within these categories. And so you add another 15, 13, 13% 13 um, on to uh, two standard deviations, which again, like I said, is a smaller number of people. The farther out you go in rarity, um, in other words, the number of people that actually fall in these categories, 
become more and more significant. And so when you move out into uh, the 2% range here uh, to 55% or 55 and moving beyond 130 to 145, you're only adding another 4% essentially um, to each of these categories overall on the low end and on the high end. And um, so they again, it's fewer and fewer people the farther out you go. So if you have a, a IQ score of 130 and beyond, you really f fall within about 2% of the population. You go much beyond that, and you're 0.1%. Um, in most cases, when we're talking about um, uh, mental retardation, mental retardation or m m mental handicaps. Um, MI, what we used to refer to as mildly mentally handicapped, uh, usually was in this 55 range, and then we would go to 55 and below and go to moderate, mildly handicapped, my MH, I'm sorry, yeah, my H looks like an A, and then we go to severe, uh, MH, which is below, so we go 55 and below to 45, 45 to 35 severe, and then we, we fall into a even lower category of functioning, you know, which is severe and profound, um, which sometimes they are con congregated together essentially. And this, is, uh, this person who's functioning at this level oftentimes needs institutional care in order to uh, uh, function. Now, a couple other other whoops, a couple other um, uh, key uh, terms to keep in mind. The first one is reliability, and reliability basically describes the consistency with which a test measures whatever the concept is. So it has to do with consistency, and a test consistently um, measures a concept. Um, and c does that each and every time. And that reliability is a key term when we're talking about testing itself. Another one is validity. And in terms of validity, uh, it refers to the extent to which a test measures or predicts what it's supposed to predict. So if a test says it predicts or, or uh, is testing intelligence and asks you a bunch of items about um, uh, your social relationships, well, that's not valid. Uh, it has to measure, uh, essentially, what it says it's going to measure and uh, measures uh, what it says it does. And that's part of validity. Now, um, in some cases, uh, we can divide this out into content, so it's specific to the content it says it's going to look at, and also we can look at predictive validity. And the terms that go with predictive um, is uh, it gives us some understanding of what might happen in the future, and that's part of predictive, the predictive power of some of these tests, and that that's part of. Um, of uh, a lot of these tests is that it gives us some a clue that if somebody scores say in the 130 and beyond then it we have a, a fairly good idea of how well they're going to do in um, college for example because of of the intelligence that is indicated by their test scores